us a little bit about uh, what you're talking about here today? Basically, uh, I, I'm going around the state and we're going to do uh, coffee and common sense. We're talking to all of our workers and we're talking to labor, we're talking to our businesses, talking to everybody. And the first question I ask is, what would you do to change America, to change uh, the direction we're going and how to get ourselves out of the, the uh, hole that's been, uh, that's been dug? And uh, it's, it's all jobs. It's all about jobs. We talk about rebuilding America, and that's really what it's about. How do you rebuild America? You build it by letting workers work. Uh, what is uh, causing a problem there? And it's basically the climate that we have gotten ourselves into, and a climate that's not conducive. It's not working as your partner. It works as your adversary. It's really not what government should be about. So those are the things that we're talking about, and those are the things we're figuring out. How do we get past that? And I think basically whether you're labor, whether you're a business person, whether you're a worker or whatever, you want to make sure that you have a job or you have opportunity uh, and that's what we're trying to, to get through. So if I take something back from this meeting, it's basically the climate. Uh, you hear people complaining about businesses are setting on their money. Why are they? Well, if they don't have the confidence uh, that they can go out and get the job done and get a marketable return, they won't do it. Simple as you won't spend it if you don't think it's a good buy or it's a good value or it's, it's something you really need to do. And right now everyone seems a lack of confidence in, in our economy or our marketplace is causing people to hold back. So we said, we rebuild America. How do you do it? Well, uh, there's many ways you don't spend the money we're spending around the world trying to rebuild the rest of the world until we get ourselves strong enough to help them when they need it. And I think that we're dangerously close to getting ourselves very weak. Infrastructure, we've been talking about that. I don't need to tell you. The infrastructure of this country needs to be rebuilt, and we can direct a lot of those resources to right here in America. I know right here in West Virginia, water, sewer, our road system, our bridge system, basically giving people a chance to make it. So that's really what it's about, and we're going to be going around the state while we're here this month, and, and I, I'm going to take more common sense back, and pretty soon we're hoping that maybe it might be a little bit more common to have common sense in Washington. How do you take all that common sense back given the climate in Washington? Well, we yeah, talk. We have our caucuses and this and that, and I'm reaching across the aisle. We meet, I, I meet with Republicans, and we sit down. I said, listen, in my home state, and, and, and I'm not, you know, I'm very proud, and not in a bragging way, but very proud of the accomplishments. We just didn't hit the low point. You know, but people say, oh, yeah, but you never hit the high. Well, we've had a gradual climb, and I think that's, that is much more sustainable. Uh, but we kept ourselves from dropping off. We had to take services away from our seniors, or our children, or our veterans. We set our priorities based around our values. And it all came to how do we create a climate that people want to do business in? That means they had to depend on the government. If we have onerous laws and that we overreach, that we try to find a balance between the economy and environment, uh, and that we try to treat people fair. And I think basically we were able to grow a good steady growth. Unemployment's still too high. 8.6% is not acceptable in West Virginia. 9.1% in the federal government on a national level is unacceptable. And uh, we're growing at such a slow pace. I really believe that West Virginia uh, could lead the way as far as in job growth if they would just let us do what we need to do and we're being throttled back. But you're hearing that not just Environmental Protection Agency or EPA, you're hearing that in all regulatory agencies, uh, whether it be the financial. I've heard people who have gone out and tried to get a loan uh, to, to expand their business and hire more people and they couldn't do it. Uh, and there's uh, the, uh, some the regulations from Washington are being put in place, um, and there has to be a balance, and, and I think that's what they're looking for. So the uncertainty is really what's holding the market back in the eyes of people we've been talking to. What about this S and P rating? How do you? I was concerned fair? about that, and I think you heard me talk about it when you know I got criticized for voting first against both uh, uh, Speaker Boehner and my majority leader Harry Reid. I voted against both of them. I said one was short and one was shorter. Um, the one that we that was a compromise that we voted on, it gives us a pathway to maybe fixing, but people are doubting whether they really have the fortitude to do it. Well, the 12 people that are put on this committee, where they really do what needs to be done, which was the debt commission's recommendation, takes a combination of so many things. You know, I want to make sure that uh, that Social Security and Medicare are able to be sustained and be able to reach out 75 years and further. There's some reasonable things we can do. And fraud, abuse, and waste is one of them to make sure that people in need are going to be able to receive them. But they're scaring the bejesus out of people, making them think well, we're going to take. That's not going to happen. But are there people that maybe are on that 
that uh, are, should not still be on. Uh, and, and I've heard so many different, we need to look at all these things. You just can't say, oh, we can't look. But you better look with the purpose of taking care of Social Security and Medicare because 55% of the seniors in West Virginia, that's their source of, of livelihood. And I don't want them to be scared thinking someone's going to take that away. That's a priority, and that's the values we have. With that being said, can defense be cut back? Absolutely, and defense will be. Um, discretionary spending, to a certain extent. We can't be everything to everybody and do everything that we want to do, but we can take care of the basics if we set our priorities. That's what we did in West Virginia. I think it's what can be done in the country. So we've been very, very plain about that. How much is the lower bond rate going to hurt states? Uh, John, I don't know right now. I'm hearing, you know, but uh, I've heard different scenarios that other countries that have gone through this. Uh, how much it affected or didn't affect. Uh, we'll have to wait and see. We still have, I think, uh, Moody's and Fitch's are still at AAA. Uh, this is a AA plus. Uh, I think, I, I would think that this was more of a, uh, a hope, a warning shot, that say, guys, get your act together. This is ridiculous. What we, have, what we observed as the American uh, people, what we went through in Washington, seeing that our government was unable to come to together for the better of our country. Now, we hope that was a passing thing, and maybe you can get your act together. If that's a warning shot, and we're going to find out very quickly within the next 90 days or so before the end of the year whether we can and whether we will. And I, I pray for as one that I'll do everything I can to go back and work with the Republicans, uh, get a group together. We've had a group. We had 50 of us in the room, 50 of us that believed that we had a pathway to fix it. It's a long-term fix and it just never got the traction that it should have gotten. Now the leadership's going to have to get on board and work with us. Uh, and there's a moderate group of Republicans and Democrats that are more than willing to work together. More than willing. Sir, you saw a couple upgrades in the state's uh, credit rating. You've seen three in, three in a row. Um, what lessons uh, did you learn from that that you can Well, I know how hard it is. I know how hard it is. Because when I first got there, that was my, my goal was to get our credit rating increased. But you had to really earn that. You just can't say, well, I'm doing a better job. So I went back every year, I would sit down. In 2004, got elected and sat down out what our challenges were, and we started fixing them, and we did. Workers' comp was our Achilles heel. Couldn't get people to reinvest, couldn't get anybody to come here. Got labor together, we all sit down and we worked through that. We took care of our workers better if they got injured, and we have a solid system now. So we started identifying our problems. And then with doing that, I had to go back to the rating agencies every year, and they said, well, yeah, but you know, the whole country's doing better and this and that, so you're really not doing and then when things start falling off in 2-7, we kept going. And I said, no, listen, we've done some things and we made some changes that no one believed we could. And if you check the attitude in West Virginia, it's solid. And we're moving. And our employment is much lower than, usually when things would go south on us, we would always spike above the national average and stay there. That never happened. Uh, and with all that being said, we started getting people seriously looking at us and thought we were serious about fixing our pension debts about fixing our workers' comp debt, about fixing our overall indebtedness that we had, about running the state in a more friendly business, uh, job-creating attitude, and it's all about creating jobs. We had people working, we had panels were cleared, everybody was doing much, much better. So we started getting recognized for that, and, and I was very, very appreciative. I was very proud of that, and still am. And we're one of the only states, really, uh, very few, that ever got a credit increase during the recession. We got three in a row. Senator, one of the things I took big one on was the hyper partisanship in Washington. And since they've come out, there has been a blame game going on between both parties. Uh, it, it almost seems like a never ending cycle. How do you stop that? I, that's why I think when you heard me say that, I hope it was a warning shot that they sent a warning signal out because now you just saw exactly what they, you know, this is not a time to blame. It was, it was a very, uh, it was very dysfunctional if you look at it from government shouldn't work that way. And the people were disgusted with it. And if they weren't, then why would the poll ratings be 18%? Only 18% of the American public, and I think it's even dropping further, uh, believe that Congress uh, is doing their job or is doing it in a satisfactory manner. I mean, the telltale signs are there. So if that's a warning shot down to a, uh, a double A plus, then yeah, they've identified. That's what people are upset about. And now, if we can we really fix our problems? We went right to the brink. Uh, can we truly intervene in a real responsible way? And I think that's, that's the challenge that was sent. I would hope that both uh, the Democrats and Republicans and the administration and the president 
would accept it as a warning signal. Come on, guys, get your act together and let's be Americans first. Let's rebuild this country first. Let's make sure that America is working first. You know, we can fix this. Well, that reality with the downgrade, you think a little bit more depending on what the markets do today and you know, through the rest of the year? Oh, I, you, you, you're saying basically, will it be sustained long enough for us to do something? Well, real? I'm just wondering if, if, if with the, whatever the markets do, if, if they continue to sure. rumble, will that really kind of serve as more of a reality Let me tell you one thing, if, if, and, and I will say this and say, from what I'm seeing right now, and I would think that if they see this continue a worldwide slide that depends on the strength of America, then we ought to get, get our act together and get back in Washington and do the long-term fix that needed to be done in the first place. If that's what needs to be done, let's do it and do it now, not wait until it continues to tumble and then try to rebuild. It's going to be much more difficult. So we'll see what happens there. But I, I would hope that those in charge, the leadership uh, on all sides, are looking in a rational manner, putting the country first, and if they need to call us back, call us back. Let's go do what we got to do. Uh, we knew that there was a fix to be had. We knew that the markets would have reacted favorably if we did it. Uh, we tried to dodge it in a very tactful way. Um, and now we have to wait for something that people might not believe will work. Let's just go and fix it. Are you saying you'd be willing to go back before September 7th and maybe half out? Oh, in a heartbeat. In a heartbeat. I'm willing. I just want to make sure people are serious about fixing things. Just going up there and sitting around, and there's a few people might make you know that that doesn't work, and and I think there's enough of us now, uh, no matter whether we're fresh ones like myself coming in, but we went there for a purpose to fix things. When I made a decision to ask for the support to be a senator, I made it because I believed that that we had challenges in Washington that were greater than what we still had in West Virginia. I just didn't know they were this great, and I didn't know that it was that far apart. So. If they want to put us in a room and keep us there and at least we we'll talk to each other and work with each other and let's find out who's serious I'm willing to go today. Okay. Guys, before you head out, I just want to let you know that later today we'll be releasing a letter the senator sent to oh, yeah. Senator Reid. I did send this. I, 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 I forgot that. Uh, when this was announced and, and the compromise, when the compromised uh, um, compromise came about of what we would be voting on and I did vote for that because I thought, thought it gave us a pathway of fixing it and that committee was going to be formed and the majority leader gets to pick three and the minority of the Senate gets to pick three. I asked to be one of those and I talked about everything we just talked about. What we were able to identify, what we were able to fix and bring people together and I thought with that that might warrant my uh, ability or opportunity to, to sit on this committee. I also am a realist, and I understand that things work in a pecking order, and most of it is driven by seniority, and me being one of the newest members, that maybe the chances wouldn't be as great. But I would hope they would look at, are they serious about fixing, are they serious about getting a bipartisan group that thinks bipartisan, and, and, and that's me, and I can work on both sides very easily and try to bring people together. We did that. So I would hope that that would have some merit to it. So we did, and we'll release a letter that, that we touted and we requested uh, consideration on. We'll see what happens. Thank you.